All right. How many of you are excited for the Word of God? You know what we are, what, what are we, which series are we doing? Last, last week, which series are we doing? WWJD, what would Jesus do? How Jesus treat people in his time. And we are, we are talking about it and we want to know how he treated as Christian, as a child of God, how we want to treat and how he treated us. And we put application in a, even of the scripture in the Bible. So last week we talked about, you know, cleansing of the temple and, and our body is our temple and Jesus wants to cleanse and all this that we, I hope and I believe you can apply to it for your daily life. But this week it will be continued. But it's a different story. And before I started, I want to talk. There's a three men. You know, they were going to a fishing trip. Okay, three of them, very close friends, go for a fishing trip and all of a sudden they came to this topic about death. Hey, I mean, we, we are now like 45 and uh, one, so now later we're going to die one day and uh, if you are going to die one day on your funeral, what would you like to hear people say about you? And the first man said, oh, I, I would like to hear people who come and look at my body and said, oh, he is a good doctor and he's a good husband and he's a, he's a good person as well. Oh, that's what I want to hear. The second person said, Oh, I want to hear that I'm a good teacher and I inspire to the kids. And, and, then, and then they say, Oh, this is a good person, very generous. And that person is very quiet. Don't want to say anything. He was thinking deeply. And then two of them asked him, What would you want to hear in your funeral from people? I wish I want to hear. Hey, look, look, look. This guy is breathing and moving. You know, I would like to hear that and I stand it up. So death, nobody want to face. Today, my topic is how Jesus treat the broken hearted. How Jesus treat the broken hearted. Okay? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious morning, Father God. Father, we declare with our spirit and our mouth that we love you and you are our Savior and you are our Redeemer. Father, this morning, Father, with this worshiping and submitting attitude of Father God, that we want to know your character, uh, we want to know your, your, of your deity, Lord Father God, in our life, and uh, we want to apply it in our life, Lord Father God. So may your voice be heard, may your spirit move in this place, and may our life change and transform to your likeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How Jesus treated the broken hearted. Have you ever been to a good funeral. Have you ever been to a good funeral? When I talk about funeral, do you think it is possible to describe funeral as good? We can think, you know, keep that possibility in mind. Funeral, good, mm, everybody cry, separation, and uh, you know, like all this stuff happening, how can it be good? Keep that possibility in your mind as we're going to look in the three accounts in the scripture where Jesus faced what we call death. I hope I can make it with three accounts because our worship took quite a while. Maybe I cut with two and see how it goes. And we will consider them to discover how Jesus treated these people as a broken heart. You know, when a person broken heart means nothing is worse in the time when your loved one gone, isn't it? You know I mean, sometimes you, you lost your wallet, or you lost your job, or anything can happen, or oh, you're sad, and you, but nothing can compare to a place or a time where your husband, your mom, or dad, or your brother is broken hearted. Even you know it's, we have a glad reunion, you know, sometimes, oh, I cannot talk to him, it's a broken hearted. So, let's quickly go there. The first incident Jesus faced is the God who have compassion for the broken hearted. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 16. I'm not going to read it to save time. Okay? Just summarize it. I said, there's, there's a widow. He, she, he, her husband already passed away. She got only one son and her son died. So on their way to the cemetery, they're carrying this son's body. If you read it. And Jesus is traveling through this here as well. They come in to face to face. 
And the word, his heart went out to her. And then if you look at it, isn't it a good funeral? And then Jesus raised that guy, that dead son. Jesus raised it again. Isn't it a good funeral? I like that one. I want to go to a little bit of history background, okay? The village, it says, it says there, the village, that village nine is the village is 25 miles away from Capernaum where Jesus' ministry is began, okay? On the shore of the Galilee. And it was five miles away from Nazareth. So Jesus is starting his ministry and he is coming to this town and there's a funeral coming. So this big two group meet in the middle of this narrow path. And in this body, they don't have like open caskets on, on those days. So they carry on the stretch, you know, the dead body, wrapped with the linen. If the family is poor on that time, if the family is poor, they can hire only one fluids player. You know, at the back they play fluids and they hire one mourner. Mourner, so or cry, cry, and ooh, you know, like, like that. But if you are well off, you can hire a lot of musicians like fluids player and everything and a lot of mourners and, 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 and the th things are going well. But this story, they see that it's a large crowd. They mean the whole town is love these widows and all of them are going to this procession. And they're going to, they meet right in the middle. The first thing we notice about Jesus, how he treats broken hearted, is the first word he said to the widow. What did he say? She didn't come. Our oh, teacher, teacher, help me. She didn't say anything. She was just crying, crying, looking at the body and crying, a broken hearted. I, I cannot see my son anymore. We used to hug together. We used to eat. I brought him up. And now he is not here anymore. And the broken hearted weeping. She, she may not even realize Jesus is there. But Jesus saw her. The Lord saw her. When the Lord saw her, what happened? I highlighted it. His heart went out to her. And then he said the first word, don't cry. Everybody turn to each other and say, don't cry. And then you say, and say it again. And say it again, say that, I'm not crying. He, he said, don't cry. What does it represent? It is strange for him in a funeral, your loved one go, and then Jesus said, don't cry. It isn't straight. You know, I have one, one incident. This is a real incident. I don't want to say name and stuff, okay? If that person watch video, he know it, all right? My friend's pastor and um, um, their, their child who is unborn passed away after seven, eight months. So we have a funeral. And of course, you know, like, the mother carry this baby for seven months and... Um, is the, 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 the body is already formed and, and then in the in her funeral she weep you know, the mom weep mom as pastor as well and then we have a at night service and then one of the uh, uh, church leader, the, the old lady with angry face get up you guys are minister, why you cry this is a celebration you're not supposed to cry as a Christian. There's a celebration because he went back to the Lord. And there's a celebration we have to... And everybody like, I don't know what to do. We, are, we were going to sing this really sad old hymn. I don't know, is, uh, they were closing with that. And my, one of my pastors said, going to sing that one. So I, I was preparing, finding the chords and everything. I was just, everybody shocked. And then the mom also... You know? Jesus, the elder, it was... I think it's inappropriate, you know? And she's saying this, I know what she's saying, but it's inappropriate. And then the, the pastor comes in, change, 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 uh, change to Hokri the Wah. They have to change song. <laughs> it's crazy. It's nothing wrong with weeping, man. Jesus weep. When Lazarus died, when he heard, nothing wrong with weeping. It touched Jesus' heart when he see broken hearted. So he said, don't cry, don't cry. Then Jesus did something very, very unusual. Very unusual. He went up, everybody, you know, there's a carrier, the whole crowd is there, and all of a sudden, this to me, and Jesus said, don't cry. 
and everybody stopped. Who is it? What's he going to do? Hey, everybody, can, you can imagine this intense like, you know, if there was an uncle or whatever, what are you coming to? Don't come and disturb us, anything. So everybody's staring at him. Who is he? And then he did something unusual. He went up and go and touch the funeral beer. No Jews in that time would consider such thing. Go and touch this dead body. Everybody sees what's going to happen. And they might be thinking, his follower might be thinking, he healed the disease and this, but now he meet the dead. Is the dead also subject to his power or not? And then what did he do? With a loud, clear voice, he said, Young man, I said to you, get up. Father, I pray that... No. Father, I pray that uh, my head... No, no, no. When you have sick disease, when you have everything, you have authority to command to get up as a child of God. You have a problem, you have a situation. Jesus, young man, I say to you, get up. In verse 14, you see it. That voice pierced his ear of the dead. The dead, that voice came into his ear. And the young man opened his eyes. I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine. The young man opened his eyes. And Jesus take him by the hand and lift him up. And he gazed, his gaze fall upon his mother. He look around, what's going on, what's going on? And then he engaged with his mother's eyes. And then they united and long, they hug and cry. You know, all these things. I can, I can see it. I can feel it. That's amazing. When my dad passed away, I saw this story and I said, Dad, get up. I want to see it, man. But I'm not sure it can happen or not. I wish it happened. I wish it happened. But I don't, I don't want to see people see me like crazy and stuff like that. You know? The multitude look in silence. Look like they don't move. What had just happened? No screaming, no clapping, nothing. They just shock. Look like they are in the presence of God. Indeed, they are right in front of God. They just haven't realized it. And then after that, they started glorifying. Oh, God has come to help His people. So the first one, I said, God has compassion. If you have a broken heart, you don't even need to cry out. You don't even need to come to anything. God sees it and He reached out. His compassion is there. That's how Jesus treated brokenhearted. And let's go to the second point. He's the God who comforts and encourages the brokenhearted. It leads to another death story. In Mark chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. This one you also you all know it. Then one of the synagogue leaders named uh, J uh, Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and he pleased um, earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hand. You know, he begged and, uh, and uh, he asked him for Jesus to come and help. And Jesus went with his rulers towards that house. In the, in the, in the middle, he got interrupted. You remember the, the woman with the blood problem come and touch his garment? And uh, he, after that, in verse 35, it's that story according to verse 35, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? In, in other uh, translation, why trouble the teacher? The, the, your daughter is dead. There's no hope. Story is finished. Don't bother him anymore. Don't trouble him anymore. Let's not meet, miss this impact of these words. Don't trouble the teachers anymore. Do you? I want you to imagine, I want you to think. Do you think? It's any trouble for Jesus to raise the dead? If you think that he's God, any trouble for Jesus to raise the dead? Do you think there is any problem for the life giver? The one who created us in the beginning. The one who keep our heartbeat until now. He's the one who keeping our heartbeat until now. Is it too much trouble for him to go to this house and raise the dead? No. It is too much trouble for him to not to do that. That's why he came to this world. And the messenger 
Why bother the teachers? Why? Don't go and trouble the teachers anymore, the master anymore. Just imagine yourself in Jesus' shoe. Just imagine yourself in Jesus' shoe. You came here, you want to perform miracle, you want to raise the dead, you want to heal everything, but people think, you know, I don't trouble him, everything. Instead, he will be a lot of trouble if he don't do this. Now, Jesus could have called attention to himself. As you know, in Facebook, if we can, uh, a lot of, you can see all the vines or all, all the things. If you do, you can do something strange. You take the video and you put it on Facebook and there's so many likes, 100, 200 likes. And we are happy about it. Okay, let's, let's be honest. Happy about it. Can you imagine? You can raise the dead. If you can raise the dead, there will be headlines everywhere and on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. You will show everybody. But Jesus, no, he, his mission is just to glorify his father. And he even said, that, don't tell anybody in verse 43. You say, Any, don't tell anybody, you know. And then, the messenger said, don't trouble the master any further. As soon as Jesus heard it, Jesus heard that one, he said to Jairus, in verse 36, over here, he said, don't be afraid, just believe. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be afraid, just believe. And say it louder. Don't be afraid, just believe. That is how Jesus treated the brokenhearted. The father is brokenhearted. Her daughter is gone. No hope. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. He have not do anything yet. He just said, like just now, don't cry. He said, don't be afraid, just believe. Today Jesus is telling you, whatever situation you have, don't be afraid, just believe. Just believe. And he gave comfort and encouragement. If we continue reading, and then he called somebody, his, his disciple, he let everybody wait outside, and then he raised the dead. He said, this child is not dead. She is asleep. You look at it. This child is not dead, but asleep. And in verse 40, you will see what happened. But they laughed at him. Jesus said, don't worry, man. Just believe this child is just sleeping. But these, these people already know this child is already dead, not moving, not breathing. They know it. And Jesus said, they laughed at him. They mocked at him. Don't try to tell us that she's not dead. You know, I want you to put that yourself in this situation. We also say something like that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it seems like something impossible in our eyes. Jesus said, don't be afraid. Just believe me that I can do it. And you say, oh God, but you don't know my situation. You don't know my situation. No matter how hard I try, my marriage is, no matter how hard I try, my situation is, situation, no matter how hard I try, my relationship is. God, you don't know, I've been looking for a job and job and I, I, I cannot get the job until now. You, you. Maybe you cannot relate to this. How am I going to support my family if I serve you full time? If I have to quit job? Bad God, you don't know this. Bad God, I mean this is a very applicable to my life as well. And Jesus said, don't be afraid, just believe. Can you say it to your neighbor again? Jesus said, don't be afraid, just believe. Because with me, all these are Possible, amen. With me, all things are possible. I'm the one who parted the rest. I'm the one who stopped the sun, who tell the sun, stop. I'm the one who it is. And I'm the one who delivers the millions of Israel out of Egypt. And I'm the one who went ahead of them. And then in the daytime, I show them with a the cloud. I lead them with the cloud. In the nighttime, I lead them with the pillar of the fire uh, to, for them to travel. I am the one who turned the water into wine. I am the one who, turn, who can turn your situation, bad situation, to the, 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 the joy of dancing. I am the one. There is no marriage that he cannot reconcile. There is, there is no situation that he cannot turn around. It is our God. Come on, it is our God. That you got to have, don't be afraid, just believe. I am the one who raised the dead. And I am the one who overcome the dead. Myself. Don't tell me how big your problem is. Just believe. Don't be afraid. And if you continue reading, after he put them all out, he took the child's father 
a mother, a disciple who were with him, and he went, uh, he went in with the child where the child was, and he took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kom, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. That is in his, that time his, his language. Get up. Instantly, instantly. She, she, she the, the dead body shiver and passed through this unconscious form. What he say? The pulse of heart and life beat again. Do, 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 beat again. And the lips and fold of white to the, become a pink. Slowly, slowly, you know, happening one by one. The eyes slowly, slowly open like from sleep. And this girl, look around what's going on. And then she saw her parents. And they were, oh, my, my daughter, mom, you know, they hug and they, they cry. Can you imagine this sense? The parents, they thought it's gone. Can you imagine this sense? The one who treated the brokenhearted like he, like that, the one who treated the brokenhearted, hopeless, that he promised that he will come again. And he still has the same power over our enemy, death. He still has the same power to awaken those who sleep. I think I have time. Yeah, praise God. I have time. So I go to the third one. Okay? The God who deeply moved for the broken heart. You know, this title, I made it by myself. I'm not sure it makes sense. I'm not the grammar, everything. <laughs> I, I asked Irene, she said, it's okay. So I, I go ahead with that. The God who deeply moved for, maybe the broken heart, for a broken heart. That's it. Jesus left to visit. Okay, uh, let's check it out. This one, everybody know about Lazarus. You know Lazarus. When he, you know, Jesus, when he heard this, it's about Jesus. Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's sons may be glorified through it. So what happened is Jesus have a friend called Mar Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Okay, whenever Jesus walked past uh, the town of Bethany, he liked to spend time. He make his time to spend time with these three friends of his. Okay, he loved them so much. And one day, this Lazarus, the brother, became ill. And Jesus wasn't in the town. It's a terrible sickness. And the doctor said, this is looking serious. It doesn't look good. So Mary and mother sent messenger to go and find Jesus. That's a big project. Go and find Jesus. And tell them that Lazarus, his friend, is ill. And the condition is getting worse. And this verse came in. The messenger, go and tell Jesus. And Jesus said this. When he heard that Jesus said, the sickness, he said to the messenger, the sickness will not end in death. It is to glorify God. And the messenger is very happy, go back to Bethany and said to Mary and mother, the sister, hey, look, Jesus said this is not a serious problem. It is not serious. He's not going to die. And the Mary and mother go into the room where the Lazarus is lying and sick and, and the Lazarus, Lazarus, you know what? Jesus said, you're not going to die. This is nothing. And Lazarus said, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, that's what Jesus said. You're not going to die. Are you sure? Okay, I believe, I feel like, okay, I'm not going to die. And then his hopes up and he was like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm not going to die. This is just headache. This is just sickness. And then he was hoping and then slowly, slowly getting worse. And then slowly, slowly he go into coma and then slowly, slowly he did. He died. It must have been very hard for his sister Mary and mother to accept it. It is test of their faith. And then continue, verse 11. After he has said this, he went, on tell, he went on to tell them. So he go and tell the disciple, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I'm going to, I'm going there to wake him up. He, tell, he told his disciple that his disciples said, we're not going, we're not going back now. Because Lazarus, why are you going back now? Because Lazarus is asleep. They don't understand. They don't understand. They thought Lazarus is asleep. He said, but Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews were trying to... So I'm not going to read that. Because Jews were trying to kill Jesus, this disciple don't want him to go back there because they are with Jesus and they want to try to save their own skin. So they don't want to go back. Don't go. Why are you going back? No, he's asleep anyway. They don't get it, what Jesus is saying. They don't get it. So Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who works in the daytime will not stumble. For they see by the wall's light. It is when a person walks at night and they stumble, for they have no light. They, they're getting confused. I'm getting confused as well. What is, he, what is Jesus saying? 
And after he had said that, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. He just said it again. But I'm going there to wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. They, they still think Lazarus is asleep. And Jesus had been speaking of his death. Now, one thing you have to remember, remember Jesus don't like the word death. Whenever death comes, he likes to say sleep. That's why in Christian, we have fallen into uh, uh, a sleep in Jesus. We said it in the funeral. It's just a sleep. It's just a sleep. And then finally, Jesus have to relent, you know, like Jesus have to say with anger, like, hey man, what I'm saying is, friends, Lazarus is dead. And they say, oh, dead. Stay, but I don't go back. People will kill you. That is it. He told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> so thick, and they don't get it. And then, and for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go and heal him. And Jesus finally go there. And it's a very interesting story, what happened over there. And Mary, and then look at verse 25, and Jesus said to her, I'm the rest. This is very, very interesting verse, and very famous as well, okay? Mary and Martha said, Jesus, you come very late already. My brother is already dead, for already for four days. No hope, finish. And then Jesus said this, everybody read it together, one, two, three. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus tell to Martha and Mary. The same question I want to ask. I'm the resurrection. I can give life. Whoever believes, do you believe this? Anything dead in your life, spiritually or emotionally, anything dead in your life, if you believe in Him, you will be resurrected and you will be alive. It is okay to weep. Mary and Martha weeping. Even sometimes our friends, when our loved one gone, we weep. In the first Thessalonian, brother and sister, we do not. But we do not weep like non believer. There is no hope. We have hope. We're going to meet them again. First Thessalonians chapter 4 13. We have hope. We weep because we have emotional. So if you continue, read in verse 32 to 38, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him. See, Lord. And then I highlighted it there. So they were crying and they were weeping and, and, and Jesus, this, 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 there's no hope. And Jesus said, and Jesus, what happened? He was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. They, this is just broken hearted. There's no hope already. When he sees, my brother and sister, if you have this heart, one, Jesus see, he is moved. Come and see the Lord, he replied. He's deeply moved. He's deeply moved. His heart is staring. His spirit is staring. And if we continue reading, then Jesus said, see how he loved me. You know, Jesus, Jesus raised, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus come out. And one of the commentaries said, if he don't single Lazarus, he said, come out. The whole cemetery will come out. He said, because he has this power. And then he have to name, put the name, Lazarus come out, so only Lazarus come out. You know, can you imagine like if he say, come out, raised from the dead. And every, you know, I, I don't know, that's, that's in the movie, Chinese ghost movie. If they come out, I mean, everybody will run away, I tell you. He just said, Lazarus, come out. Verse 43. This is too long to read, you know the story. Jesus commanded Lazarus come out. Simon said, maybe this is true. And then he restored this family in this story. I would like to conclude as a worship team come up on stage. We can, we can rejoice today. That same God, that same Jesus said, I'm coming back again. I'm coming back again. Where we're going to meet our parents, our great grandparents. He's going to raise all the dead. And he swallow, he show up his victory. Now I want, I want you to rise up. As we're going to see, he hear the cry of the brokenhearted. 
He had experienced and suffered extreme physical pain for us. He had experienced and suffered this emotional, the betrayal that his disciple uh, uh, des deserted him when, when, he, he, when he was nearly get killed. And he had experienced and suffered broken hearted for the very people that he came and saved. He has a compassion for you and give you comfort and encourage. In John 10.10, 10, said, I came so that you may have abundant life. Jesus is your answer. He has a compassion for you. When you come to the Lord with a broken heart, and I didn't write it down here, in, uh, in Psalm 51 verse 17, I read it off of, My sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. Psalm 51 verse 17. God sometimes closes his eyes. God sometimes closes his ear. It depends on the situation. God maybe, you know, don't want to answer. But when you come with a broken spirit, when you come with a broken heart, in never, whatever situation, he will never despite. You have whatever situation, I'm not, I'm not sure what you're facing. If you come with a broken heart, a sincerely repented heart, he will move. And he will comfort you, he will encourage you. And he has a compassion for you and turn this thing around and change your life around. And come to the Lord. Come to Jesus. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. And come. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, we lift your name on high, Lord. It is you and your name that we have a victory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. And may your presence continue work in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.